This is CBS 6 News in high definition. Union wins its first NCAA hockey championship. Highlights from the game and the reaction on campus it did lead to a few arrests. Exactly one month, that's how long the black box batteries lasted after the Malaysian airliner went missing. The next step this morning in the search and the battle over who gets the black boxes if they are ever found. And cheers and smiles, the event that brought survivors and first responders together almost a year after the Boston Marathon bombings. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you here. It's Sunday, April 13th. I'm Matt Markham. Happy to see you. We'll have all those stories straight ahead, but first we're going to go to meteorologist Eric Torgerson for a look at your forecast. It's a warm weekend. It looks pretty nice outside. A couple drizzles, a couple clouds, but better things ahead, right, Eric? Yeah, that's right, Matt. We are going to see those temperatures head up into the 70s for the first time since November 1st. We'll get to that 70 degree mark this afternoon. We were close yesterday, but this morning we'll get there as some warmer air will work in. And what's moving through this morning is a little warm front producing some showers, even a couple rumbles of thunder in a couple of spots right now. These showers will head out, though. We'll dry things out by noontime, see some increasing breaks of sun and our cool 40s near 50 at this time towards 9 o'clock. We'll head towards those low and mid 70s this afternoon with a mix of clouds and sun and a gusty mild breeze Matt to enjoy sure will thanks Eric continuing coverage this morning Union Hockey's fans spirits soar as the Dutchman skate to their first national championship title the Dutchman heated up the ice quickly in the first period with three goals in less than two minutes and that groomed the path to a seven to four win over Minnesota fans celebrated in Philadelphia and as you see back at home Though few revelers became a little too rowdy, five people were arrested after Union fans took to the streets. Well, police say they were expecting some sort of reaction. At least one officer was hit by a beer bottle. He's expected to be okay, though. As the crowd started to wind down, here's what police had to say basically kind of just babysitting here now? It's what it feels like. <laughs> it's what it feels like. However, there are some good stories to share from proud Union fans on their team's accomplishment. We'll have highlights from the game coming up just about 20 minutes from now. In other news this morning, Scotia police continue to search for a missing Schenectady woman this morning. 60-year-old Wilma Trotter was last seen in the village around 5.30 Friday morning at the area around Washington Avenue near Livingston Avenue. She's about five foot four, 200 pounds, was last seen wearing a dark poncho and a red pillbox hat. Police say she suffers from dementia. If you have any information which may be helpful to Scotia police, you're asked to give them a call. That number's on our website at cbs6albany.com. Warren County Road is back open, only for emergency responders though, this morning after a mudslide last night. State Route 418, or River Street in Warrensburg, was completely shut down last night between Planty Drive and Johnson Drive. No injuries have been reported, but we'll let you know as soon as we find out the road is open again. And of course, when we're not on the air, you can always check our website for that information, cbs6albany.com. Meanwhile, FEMA has now opened field offices to help the victims of the mudslide in Washington State. They can apply for temporary housing, counseling, and small business assistance as well. FEMA says more than 400 people have registered so far, and it's been three weeks since that mudslide in Oso. 36 people died. Eight are still believed to be missing. No new signs this morning in the search for the missing Malaysia Airlines plane. The desperate attempt to pinpoint the plane's location could become even more difficult because batteries in black boxes may have finally died. No new electronic pings have been heard since April 8th. The electronic emissions from the black box were only expected to last about a month. Once officials are positive, they won't hear any more sounds. They will deploy a submersible device to look for the plane. If the box is eventually found, it's unclear who will get it. The Attorney General is in the UK right now discussing exactly that. The ICAO and the experts involved in identifying based on international law and domestic law who actually does have custody over the black box. But I would like to address that when we actually do find the black box. The plane disappeared on March 8th with 239 people on board. At least two people have died and 500 homes were destroyed in just six hours during a forest fire this morning northwest of Chile's capital. At least one other person has been injured. Strong winds pushed the flames into two cities on the coast. 
The flames have swept over at least 660 acres. More than 500 firefighters are battling the flames. One of the city's jails is in the path of the fire and it's being evacuated now. It has 2,000 inmates. New this morning, Ukraine is sending special forces to retake buildings held by pro-Russia protesters. The interior minister says the pro-Russian separatists opened fire on troops. Unrest in Donetsk, Ukraine, started yesterday when armed men seized government buildings. The town is about 90 miles from Russia. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry says he's worried the attacks have been synchronized and are similar to previous attacks in Crimea. Meanwhile, family and friends lay rest to a soldier killed at Fort Hood yesterday. In the afternoon, the funeral for Sergeant First Class Daniel Ferguson was held in Bushnell, Florida. Ferguson served nearly 21 years in the Army. The Army says Specialist Ivan Lopez opened fire on the base last week and killed three people, wounded 16, before taking his own life. Coming up right about 7.06 now, if you enjoy nice weather, yeah. I think uh, you're going to get it today, huh? Yeah, we've been waiting for those 70s to oh, appear, yeah. and uh, they'll be here today and even tomorrow. Going to be even warmer feeling than today. Well, I think it was, what, November was the last time we had a November 70? November 1st was the last time we were at 70, and October 12th was the last time we were above 70 for the high. Well, we'll take so it. So it's been a while, and you will enjoy that today and tomorrow. This morning, though, you see those clouds out there warm front coming through and some showers have been around as well I'll show you where those are right now in a second but you can see our downtown sky cam is clear of those showers currently 51 our temperature that has just jumped up from last hour when it was still in the 40s so numbers on the rise already mid 60s by noon and 70 to 75 or a little better than, than that in a couple of spots for the afternoon high today Here's the broad picture on the radar showing those showers mainly from the Mohawk Valley Capital Region, Northern Berkshire County on north, where the rain has been fairly steady at times. Some of those yellows indicating some at least moderate elements of rain too. And there's a couple of lightning strikes there. Northern Rensselaer County, a couple of rumbles of thunder passing through with that little heavier shower there just northeast of Pittstown right now. Further north again is where most of the rain has been though across the Adirondacks over towards Rutland County right now, seeing some pretty steady, at least moderate rains for a good chunk of time over the past few hours you can see those rains have moved through but the back edge is here outside of some isolated showers across the Catskills that's the back edge and once that exits here during the mid to late morning hours say by 9 through 11 o'clock we'll dry things out and see some increasing breaks of sun by noontime as those clouds do thin out back here across the Midwest. There are some more storms, though, further west. Those will track mainly northeast and miss us, which is why we'll expect dry and just warm conditions the rest of today as that warm front moves to our north and out of the region. So here's how it looks on the forecast map. Those couple of showers still lingering north and especially northeast by 9 o'clock. Pretty much gone by 11, 12 with those increasing breaks of sun. And that sun will do us wonders for those temperatures mix, which is a few clouds uh, throughout the course of the afternoon. Numbers will head towards the 70 degree mark even across the north. A little cooler Indian Lake Wells, Rutland, Manchester, where again those clouds will be latest to clear, but solidly mid 70s for the capital region 74, Albany, Clifton Park 76, Hudson 77 for Kingston, and even 74, Cobleskill, Oneonta, and Great Barrington this afternoon with a gusty wind out of the south, perhaps as high as 30 miles per hour in those gusts at times. Overnight, staying quite mild, just some patchy clouds, lows mainly in the mid 50s, just some low 50s across the north. And then tomorrow, with that warm front further north and even stronger southerly flow, temperatures will head towards the perhaps mid and upper 70s for highs on our Monday. 77 the forecast high right now. Still pretty blustery too. Some late evening and overnight showers and perhaps rumbles of thunder will develop with that cold front. Looks like we're in for a good slug of rain through Tuesday with that front as temperatures fall back to between 50 and 55, but with brighter skies for Wednesday and Thursday, Matt. And despite the rain, a reminder of where we've been for many months. Thanks a lot, Eric. Boston's police commissioner says there will be more uniformed and undercover officers along the Boston Marathon route this year. Watching along with them, 100 cameras, 50 observation points. Three people were killed and more than 260 were wounded after two explosions near the finish line last year. David Alselrod was there as survivors and first responders gathered for a Sports Illustrated cover shoot. They came from all corners of the city. And that was David Axelrod reporting this morning. A judge finally steps in after a family with disabled children are harassed for 15 years. The humiliation the Ohio judge hopes will change this man's ways. That's next. Limited time only, Colony and Saratoga Springs. The drugs designed to help battle the flu may not be as helpful as originally thought. 
Allison Harmelin has that story and more in this morning's Eye on Health. A new report questions whether antiviral medications like Tamiflu and Relenza offer significant help against the flu. It's Allison Harmelin for CBS News, New York. An Ohio judge sentences a man to stand on a street corner holding a sign saying he harassed a neighbor and her disabled children. The family claims that man used a vent to fan kerosene fumes into their home and smeared feces on their house. After five court appearances, a judge said enough was enough and sentenced him to 15 days in jail and ordered him to hold up a sign saying he was a bully and stand on a street corner. The letters have to be large enough that someone could read them from 25 feet away, too. The allegations began about 15 years ago when the man started picking on his neighbors and their adopted children with disabilities. I hope that what's been achieved here is finally the modicum of justice that they had been hoping for for quite some time. A city councilwoman is pushing for more severe charges to be brought against him. The family says they just hope the sentence did enough to make all this harassment stop. It's 7.16 now on Sunday morning. We had a nice weekend. Blue skies yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday we made it to 69, so that was a great change from the winter we had, certainly. You could feel it. I was out with a couple of friends at the Shaker Village in Pittsfield, near Pittsfield, mm -hmm. and uh, a beautiful place to go. Great, great stuff to learn there, but it just felt so nice to be out Yes. And 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 not be all bundled right. up and 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 you know <laughs> waiting to find the next building to run That's into. That's right. It's finally what we've been waiting for, and it's a taste of summer almost. You know, it's like you know we people worry that we'll skip spring every once in a while, and it, it may even feel like that to coming up today and tomorrow as temperatures will surge way into the 70s. In fact, 66 by noontime, despite the uh, fairly gray and gloomy start out there, we'll see those numbers rise as some sun develops late this morning and through the afternoon. A mixture of cloud and sunshine, 74 for that high temperature, eclipsing 70 for the first time since October, early November. Numbers right now, though, still a bit on the cool side. 42 Freelands Falls, 46 Rutland, 49 Bennington, North Adams is 48. Albany now is up to 51. Instant Doppler 6 showing those showers mainly across at Rondex over towards Vermont, northern Berkshire County. That's where the bulk of the rain has been. Some of it moderate, even briefly heavy there in some of those orange shades. And there even have been a couple of rumbles of thunder, too. So you might hear one or two more of those this morning. Further south, just some isolated showers across the Catskills, mid-Hudson Valley. All of this moving off towards the east-northeast. So uh, those isolated showers there in the Catskills, mid-Hudson Valley, that's about the back edge of this activity. So over the next couple of hours, say from 9 through 11, the showers should be ending and moving out. And we'll see clouds start to thin a bit later this morning as well as we'll have that afternoon sun developing. More thunderstorms across the Midwest. Most of these and what will redevelop today across the Midwest, the Mississippi Valley, will stay out of here for today. And even tomorrow, not having this cold front move in until uh, Tuesday, we'll see the rain prevalent for us then. As for this morning, there go those couple of showers we still have out there. Through noontime, we're drying things out with those increasing breaks of sunshine developing and through the afternoon. Nice mix of clouds and sun. A beautiful day to enjoy those numbers heading up into the 70s across most of the area. The North Country, Vermont, may stay a bit cooler in the 60s as the clouds will be slowest to clear there. 70 though, Queensbury, Glens Falls, Saratoga Springs about 72. Same for Amsterdam, Albany, Cobleskill, Oneonta about 74. And even getting up to around 77 down towards Kingston for the high this afternoon. Gusty breezes will be out of the south today and tonight, helping to pump in those mild temperatures. Low to mid 50s out there for most spots for those overnight lows tonight. And then tomorrow, another beautiful day, feeling more like summer with highs even getting close to 80 in a couple of spots in the capital region. Currently forecasting 77 for Albany. Still a gusty breeze, nice sunshine. The showers move in though late tomorrow evening and tomorrow night, right through the day Tuesday. Uh, quite a slug of rain there. Near 60 early, but numbers falling Tuesday, so it will feel cooler, especially late. And then cooler Wednesday, Thursday, 50s for highs, but a good amount of sun and a slight warming trend mat towards the end of the week. All right, thanks very much, Eric. If you didn't get a chance to watch the game last night, Bobby Webler will have the highlights from the NCAA Hockey Championship. Of course, we're talking about Union College. And one of the Yankees' big free agent acquisitions breaks out of his season-long slump in a big way.